is it possible for smaller churches to grow fast? And if so, how do they do that? And is it healthy? Well, let's break it down in today's video and let's answer the question of how smaller churches can grow fast coming up. What's up, y'all? If you're brand new to the channel and we're meeting for the first time, what's up? My name's Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. I'm the co-owner of Church Marketing University, and I created this channel in order to bring you the best strategies, tactics, and ideas in order to help you grow your church and ultimately make heaven crowded. So let's dive into uh, five proven tactics here on how smaller churches can grow their church fast. Now, I know sometimes, uh, especially when we're talking about fast church growth, right? People talk about hyper church growth versus healthy, sustainable church growth. And what does that look like? Right. And how slow is too slow and how fast is too fast. Right. But here's the deal. When you take a look at the book of Acts, the church did not grow slow, right? You, you start looking when Peter started going in and started preaching, right? And, and the Lord added to their number daily, right? We're talking about huge numbers and the church grew really, really fast. So I don't think that growing fast uh, is a problem or is bad, but you do have to have some of the right systems in place in order to be able to handle some of that growth, right? So what we're going to be talking about specifically in this video isn't necessarily the systems you need to have behind the scenes. That is a different video. Specifically, we just want to talk about some tactics on how smaller churches can reach more people, uh, attract more Sunday morning visitors, and ultimately grow their church fast. Okay, so let's dive into the tactics and we'll handle the systems in another video. So number one is Facebook prayer ads. Now I've developed an entire system around this. And if you guys have seen any of my videos, you've probably heard of me talk about this uh, multiple times. So I'm not gonna go into depth because we've got lots of other videos where we break down for you exactly what the Facebook prayer ad system looks like and kind of all the different uh, pieces. Basically, ultimately what this looks like is you're going to run a, a Facebook ad that says, how can I pray for you? And what you're going to do is instead of sending people to your website, that Facebook ad, and again, not a boosted post, but an actual Facebook ad is going to send people uh, from the ad into Facebook messenger. And then you're going to set up uh, automated responses. That's called a chat bot, right? That is going to collect their prayer requests, interact with them, and then uh, invite them to church through plan your visit. And then when they show up on Sunday, you're actually going to have uh, a friendly person waiting for them at the front door to help them you know, get their kids checked in, give them a tour of the building, maybe get them a free cup of coffee, save seats for them in service, sit with them in service, right? This is a really, really important piece of it. This, this plan your visit, if you're unfamiliar with the idea, right? We started doing this at my church in 2017 and it was absolutely crazy, right? So the first thing that happened is just by offering this, this plan your visit, right? And this isn't just a plan your visit button uh, on your website. It's much more than that. You have to have kind of a system uh, behind it. And again, we have, we have some videos on that. So you guys can check out uh, some of those videos like the ultimate guide to plan your visit and some of those types of things. What the idea is, is you're not treating people like rock stars. You're treating them like family, right? So it's not, hey, we're going to give you the VIP treatment. Nobody wants that when they show up to church. They want to be treated like family. And the idea of plan your visit is having a friendly person waiting for you at the front door when you show up so that you don't walk in feeling awkward and not knowing anybody, right? It's why like the power of a personal invite is so, is so powerful is because you have somebody that you know, somebody that you trust who's waiting for you at the front door. So you're not just walking in by yourself feeling awkward like an idiot, right? So that's the whole idea behind plan your visit. So it's not the VIP treatment. It's treating them uh, like family, right? Really important distinction. So that's what the funnel looks like, right? With Facebook ad into Messenger, where there's a chat bot that ultimately leads to plan your visit. They have uh, a host waiting for them at the front door, and then we're going to plug them into a follow-up system. I recommend a 12-week follow-up system. My favorite way to do that uh, is with text and church, right? But it's important to continue to follow up with them for at least 12 weeks after they visit, right? because the only thing better than a first time visitor is a second time visitor. Now using Facebook prayer ads, especially if you have the system uh, set up the right way, uh, man, we've seen churches go from 15 to 50 in only two months. I saw a church of 60 that was completely unknown in their small town uh, in the Midwest. They went from 60 to 110 in three months and then watched a church plant that was stuck at 130 go from 130 to 200 over the summer and actually break the 200 barrier in only three months, right? 
So they uh, they grew their church over the summer and then had their two largest membership classes of people actually joining the church in July and August. So these are all smaller churches who were able to grow fast using the Facebook prayer ads system, right? And uh, and plan your visit kind of in tandem. So this is a really, really cool strategy. It's a way to do ministry, not marketing, and be able to connect with the people in your city. And instead of inviting them to church, you're literally just asking them how that you can pray for them. And then that's going to lead to an invite to be able to pray for them in person and plan your visit. Really, really cool strategy, really technique. And it's really, really effective at reaching out into the community and actually doing ministry where people are instead of just inviting them into the church all the time. Really cool. All right, number two is Google My Business, right? And so what you can actually do is you can set up a Google My Business profile on Google, right? They call it verifying it, right? Because if you if your church has been around for any length of time, then Google is really smart, right? Like they already know that you're there. But so if you go in and you actually verify your profile and you set it up correctly, this can help you reach a lot of people who are actively looking for churches. It can help you in Google search when people are actually searching for churches in your area, but it can also help you uh, in Google Maps, which is really, really important, right? So you ever go in and type like churches in your city, right? Churches in Tulsa, and you'll see that a bunch of Google Maps listings actually come up, right? And then you also have uh, the churches themselves. So the best thing that you can do is you can uh, rank in that Google Maps listing. You want to be one of those churches in the Google Maps listings before the rest of the churches, and preferably you'd be in both. And the best way to do that is by uh, using Google My Business, setting up and verifying your profile. And I'll tell you a really cool secret about Google My Business. Uh, Most churches don't know this. Most businesses don't know this. But if you'll go in after claiming and verifying your Google My Business profile, you go in and just upload two to three new photos every single week, right? So you could just uh, snap some pictures uh, on an iPhone in service or take some pictures off your Instagram, right? Just go in and upload two to three new photos every single week. What happens is Google will start to recommend your uh, church and your church's profile way more because you're actively up updating it every single week and they see that. So what's going to happen is you're going to uh, you're going to shoot up in Google Maps and in the search. And uh, I have a buddy of mine who actually does this for small businesses. He said you can see up to 25,000 new people who see your church every single month if you'll just add two or three new photos every single week to your Google My Business profile. I don't know about you, but that's a little bit of time for a really big payoff. It's pretty dope. Number three is the law of the list. Okay, now my favorite way to do this is with text and church. This is one of the best ways to build a list, right? And so if you know anything about online marketing, one of the things that you'll hear uh, dating back several, uh, like for over a decade is they'll say like, hey, the money is in the list, right? This is, this is So if you're, if you're gonna build an online course or any type of online business, right? The most important thing you can do is build an email list. And the reason is because if you build a, a website or a Facebook page or a Facebook Facebook group or uh, an Instagram account or a TikTok account or a Snapchat account or any of these different like social media and tech platforms, what could happen is they can all get shut down. Something could happen to your website, right? The server could crash or somebody could, you know, deem you a hate group and they could shut down all of your social media profiles or something like that, right? Facebook does this kind of crap all the time. Not even with hate, they just say, hey, you violated our policies and they shut stuff down. It's like, we didn't violate any policies, right? But it's all AI, it's all automated, right? And, and it can be really, really hard to get that back up. So whenever you're creating all these different things, it's not bad to create those, you definitely wanna do this, but the most important asset that you can have in any organization is an email list, right? Because you can always download that email list and you can take it anywhere you want to. So if you had uh, MailChimp or you use Text in Church or if you use ConvertKit or any of these other email list uh, programs, what you can do is you can always download that uh, as a file and you can upload into any other, even if you're, if you're switching, right? Like maybe you're on MailChimp right now and you say, oh my gosh, I'm going to take Apple's advice and I'm going to go with text and church because they're awesome. You can literally just download all of your emails in a list and you can take them over to text and church. You can upload them, boom, and you have that forever everywhere that you go, right? So no matter what size your church is right now, imagine if you had an email list of 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 emails of people who live within driving distance of your church that you could email whenever you want for free and invite them to service, right? This is the law of the list. So the cool thing is the three major places that I recommend building a list are gonna be your email list, right? So you wanna collect emails of every single person who lives within driving distance of your church, as many as you can, so you can invite them out to Christmas, Easter, new sermon series, events, uh, just a random Sunday, right? Anything that you have going on. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna build a text message list, right? And this is awesome because text messages have like a 90% 
96% open rate, right? It's actually crazy because think about it. When was the last time you got a text message that you didn't open, right? So you want to uh, build a text message list. And then my new favorite way of doing this is actually to build a Facebook messenger list, right? Now, this is something that obviously if Facebook shuts you down, they could take away your list too, right? But this is another great thing to invest in because you're always going to have your email list. You're always going to have that text message list. And then that messenger list is a really, really great asset to build as well. So as people message your church, they become subscribed to your Facebook messenger list, right? It's kind of like an email list that lives inside of Facebook. And the cool thing is, is you can actually run a tiny little Facebook ad just to that messenger list, but it's like pennies on the dollar, right? So for example, I have a friend of mine who has a church down in Texas that actually has been doing this and he's got something like, you know, 1800 or 1900 people uh, that have messaged him and most of them through different types of prayer ads and discover your purpose campaigns. Again, some things we've talked about here on this channel. What happens is now those people are subscribed to his Facebook messenger list. He can go in and he can send a message to them and he can invite them out to Easter or his back to school bash or Christmas Eve or a brand new sermon series. And he can pay Facebook. And when I say it's pennies on the dollar, I mean, literally you can send out a personalized message to every single person on there, right? 1800 people that are subscribed to your messenger list for like 20 bucks, right? It's absolutely crazy. And it comes in like a personalized text message in their messenger inbox, which is awesome, right? So you can write it uh, in the first person as if it's just like a text message from you to them. Really, really powerful, really, really effective. And Facebook Messenger has a 93% open rate, which is dope, right? So if you send that to a thousand people, 930 of them are going to open and be invited to your sermon series kickoff, uh, your grand opening, right? Your, your, your Christmas Eve, back to school, whatever it is. So really powerful, really, really cool. But that's the law of the list. Again, my favorite uh, platform for using this is Text and Church because you can use that for email and for text message. And then you can start working on building your Facebook Messenger uh, list. And one of the best ways to do that are with Facebook Messenger ads. Specifically, I really like prayer ads. And again, we have videos that kind of walk you through exactly how to do that. Now, the last thing I'll say about this as far as a strategy, I actually uh, know of a church that every single year they have a massive Easter egg hunt, right? They have between five and 6,000 people from their community. It's not a huge town. And they have five or 6,000 people from all over uh, their town who come out to their Easter egg hunt, right? So one of the best ways that you could actually use the law of the list is you could have some type of either like a release or a waiver or even a registration where you register your kid, right? And just make sure to have name, email, and phone number on there. Now you can actually go in and you can add those emails. Now imagine if, if 5,000 people had to register, you now have 5,000 emails and 5,000 phone numbers that you can add to your list inside of text and church or, you know, whatever platform you're using. You can use that to invite people back to church, right? You can use it to invite them next year. But what's cool is if they have another 5,000 people next year, let's say 3,000 of them are new, now you have 8,000 people on your email list and you have 8,000 people on your text message list and you can continue to grow it every single year. So every time you have some type of event, this is a really, really easy way to do this. Man, I know of a church that does an October outreach, uh, right? Every single October and typically have about 30,000 people that come through there. I told the leadership, I'm like, listen, if because they already have a waiver that every single person needs to fill out. And I was like, just add email and phone number to the waiver, right? Like you're getting everything else they have to sign that, you would now have 30,000 emails and 30,000 cell phone numbers that you could email and text whenever you have your Christmas services, a new sermon series, right? Think about what it would look like next year when you could pre-sell tickets to the, this, this October outreach that they do to 30,000 emails and 30,000 uh, cell phone numbers, right? Like just think about how awesome that would be, right? And the cool thing about these things is there's an unsubscribe button, right? So if people don't want to hear from you, they can unsubscribe. It's easy. But the people that want to hear from you will stick around and stay on that list. And then next year, it's another 30,000 people, right? So now you got 60,000 emails and 60,000 phone numbers, right? And it just continues to snowball every single year, right? This is this is a great way. Finally, there's a church that does uh, a Christmas outreach, same thing, but they have 50,000 people. It's a big church. 50,000 people that come through that uh, every November and December. Again, 50,000 emails, 50,000 uh, cell phone numbers that you could plug in. This is a great way to be able to build your list, right? So even if you have, if you're doing things on a much smaller scale and you only have uh, maybe 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 people that might come out to an event like that, try to figure out a way to have some type of registration or a waiver or something like that and just make sure to put name, email, and phone number. And then that way you're starting to build your list. This is a great, easy, practical way in order to utilize the law of the list at your church. Okay, so before I get to my last two 
points. Man, I wanna encourage you, uh, man, make sure to like this video. Whenever you, you like this video, that just helps YouTube's algorithm show it to even more pastors and church leaders, kind of help us get the word out here and help as many churches be able to reach more people for Jesus and make heaven crowded. Make sure to like this video uh, and maybe even send it to a friend, right? If you're getting some value out of this and, and you like it, man, maybe uh, just just uh, pray about or, or think about a, a pastor or church leader that you know that needs to see something like this and send over this video. It's a really small thing. It takes just a couple seconds for you to do, but it means such a huge deal to me. So thank you in advance for uh, maybe sending this out to a pastor or a church leader that you know that needs to hear this. Appreciate you guys. All right, number four, online reviews. Now, this is kind of crazy. And again, I think this is one of those things like we mean to do and we know that we should do, but we don't really do, if that makes sense, right? Like online reviews, we're talking about Google reviews, we're talking about Facebook reviews, we're talking about Yelp reviews. Whenever someone's looking for a church, one of the best things that they look at online reviews to see how good a church, a restaurant, a business, an organization is, right? This is just kind of how we how we do this. I have a friend of mine who every time he goes to a new city, the first thing he does is he goes to Yelp and he looks up the best local restaurants and he determines that by who has the highest amount of ratings, right? Who has the most online ratings and who has the highest online ratings. So this is really, really important. So another cool kind of tip uh, and tactic here is that if you can get two to three new Google reviews every single week, Google will again start prioritizing your church and you will start ranking in that map section that we were talking about. Man, could you go out and maybe just text five people every single week and ask them to leave you a Google review, right? If you text five people, right, then probably two or three would actually go out and do it, especially if you sent them uh, the exact link that they could click on that would take it straight to your church uh, Google My Business profile where they could now leave a, a review. And now that's two or three people every single week. You start doing that and that's just gonna skyrocket you up and you'll start ranking in Google Maps. So when people start looking for churches near them and churches in your area, churches in your city, they'll start seeing you in that Google Maps and that's just a cool free way for you to be able to start ranking simply by getting two to three new reviews every single week. All right, and finally, I kind of saved the best for last. Uh, it's between this and the, and, the, and the prayer ad system for me. Okay, so I love this. This is the Google Grant. Now, again, we've got videos kind of breaking this down in depth. So if you want to learn more about that, uh, you can take a look at some of those videos. We'll try to link some of them up here uh, for you as well. But what's, what's great about uh, the Google Grant is this is a program that Google has that is for churches and nonprofits, right? The only catch is you have to be a 501c3, but it's for churches and nonprofits. It's $10,000 a month and free Google AdWords. Okay. So this is a grant that Google has. It's $10,000 a month in free Google AdWords every single month. Okay. It's and it's literally what it sounds like. Like every month it resets and you have another $10,000 in Google AdWords, $120,000 a year in Google AdWords that you can use for your church. An important distinction, this is not a briefcase full of cash, okay? You can't just like take this and say thank you and then go make payroll or, you know, go buy direct mail or something with it. It's an ad credit, but you can literally go into Google AdWords and you can set up campaigns uh, based on what people are searching for. So you could literally uh, set up campaigns for, uh, you know, uh, so like I live in Tulsa, right? So we say uh, churches in Tulsa, best churches in Tulsa, uh, churches near me, Tulsa, right? Tulsa churches, Tulsa non-denominational churches. You can go through all these different phrases that people are searching Google for, and then you can create ads, which are automatically going to put your church on page one of Google, right? And actually at the top, right? So if you've ever seen this, if you go type this in right now, you can go open up a, a Google window, right? Type in, you know, churches in your city, and you'll see that there'll be a couple at the top that are, uh, that are ads. Those people are paying for it, but you can get it for free by utilizing the Google grant, right? So this is an incredible, incredible program. I actually didn't believe it when I first heard about this. I was like, there's no way Google just gives away $10,000 in free advertising every single month. Yes, they do, right? I guess it's like a big tax break for them uh, so they can write it off and they can say, hey, we helped, you know, First Baptist in Shiloh, Oklahoma, uh, and, and we gave them $120,000 worth of free advertising this year. I guess they can write that off. It's like, a, a, you know, a, a, a tax write-off for them. So awesome for them them. Awesome for us, right? That's what we call a win-win. I didn't believe this. I actually went out until I actually got it approved for my church. I celebrated, went sprinting through the church offices, just high-fiving people. Nobody believed me.
me and was like, yeah, right, $10,000. I'm telling you, I went crazy. I was, I was super excited. I went nuts. It's exactly what it sounds like. I literally was sending between 6,000 and 8,000 people every single month to my church website using Google's money. Man, Google Grant is another great way for you to be able to grow your church fast because you think about how many thousands of people are going to see that and go to your church website, and especially if you have something like a plan your visit landing page set up that you're sending people to. Now, with all of that traffic, they have a chance to learn more about your church, plant that seed, and ultimately plan a visit to your church on Sunday morning. All right, so if you guys like this video and you want to learn more about some of these tactics and you actually want our help, all right, kind of holding your hand and walking you through how to set some of these things up in your church, we have videos on all of this stuff inside of Church Marketing University. What we did is we actually teamed up uh, with DigiGive here recently and we have a couple of scholarships available, right? So especially if you're on a tight budget or if you're a smaller church, you know that you really need these things, but you're just not sure how you're going to pay for it. Um, man, we have scholarships available up to 90% off, uh, right? Uh, scholarship. So if you just go to churchmarketinguniversity.com slash scholarship, you can actually apply for your scholarship. And then based on kind of your situation, the size of your church, uh, and the size of your budget, that kind of stuff, you can qualify for a scholarship all the way up to 90% off. If that sounds interesting to you, if you want our help and kind of, you know, walking you through and holding your hand, how to set some of this up for it, head on over to churchmarketinguniversity.com slash scholarship, or you can just simply click on the link in the description below. Man, I am, uh, I'm for you guys. I'm legitimately praying for you guys every single week, right? So keep watching, keep hanging out, and let's make heaven crowded. We'll see you soon.